Okay, so before this video begins, let me clear up just a few really short things. First of all, uh, sorry for not putting in the benchmarks into the video yesterday. I thought it was dragging out too far, therefore I kept them and I'm going to release them today. Uh, second of all, this these are the benchmarks for the 2019 model razor blade, not the 2020 model razor blade. The title has 2020 in it because all the drivers and latest softwares from 2020, and it's for people that are interested of buying the Razer Blade 15 in 2020. This is not the 2020 model Razer Blade. I do not have that much money. This is the Razer Blade 15 2019 model with an i7 9th generation, 16 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 2060. So before we begin, the numbers are up once again. You guys are truly incredible. The number of people watching these videos is now all the way up to 5.7%. So if you like this video, if it helps you out in any way, and you're part of that 94.3% of people that aren't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe. I post tech videos every day and VR videos Mondays and Fridays. Make sure to follow me on my social media here and here because I want to hear what you guys have to say. Now, I'm hoping this is the last video of the Razer Blade saga on this channel because there truly has been too many of these videos. And, but I do feel like I need to end it off and tell you guys everything I know about this laptop. So without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks. So let me just say, I am not a proper gamer, so benchmarks are good, but the gameplay isn't. So I use my camera to record the gameplay in order to have the best results on the laptop, because when I launched OBS, the frames were just dropping. So in order to have the best and most realistic results, the footage of gameplay is from the camera. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to be speaking over the gameplay, and then I'm going to show you the charts that I have here. By the way, I really like these charts. They were really nice to make. So the first game we have up is GTA 5. Now I actually play this game on this laptop so I know it runs really well but it was nice to see the proper numbers. So the red bar means high settings and the blue bar means low settings. So as you can see on GTA 5 on high settings when we ran GTA 5's built-in benchmark we got 99 FPS average which is actually really nice. I mean you're not getting the full 144 if you got the 144 hertz screen but you are almost getting there. Now when we turned the settings down to low we got a total of 130 FPS which according to me is actually really really good for utilizing that 144 hertz display. Again you're missing out on 14 frames but you are getting there. Plus, at some points in the game, you do actually reach above 144. These are averages. Next up, we had Fortnite. So I'm no master at gameplay, but this was probably the crappiest game you will ever see of all time. Fortnite on high, which is what it set itself to when we began, got about 112 FPS average, which is really good according to me. Now, some pro players out there will tell you that's not good enough, but According to me, that is entirely playable. When we turned the settings down to low, however, this is where things got crazy. The game jumped all the way up to 183 FPS. So not only are you getting your 144 hertz, but you are actually passing it out by a lot. That was presumably the most epic battle I have ever had ever in the history of always. I think, I think this is where we end this. <laughs> Next up was CSGO. Now, the Russians were not happy with me here. Again, I don't play first-person shooters. CSGO on high settings and low settings didn't have much of a difference. But on high settings, it ran at a total of 210 FPS, and on low settings, it ran at 220. Both of those are perfectly fine, and to be honest, I wouldn't bother with low. Either way, you're getting your 144 hertz, and you're passing it. Next up was Minecraft. Now I know you guys wanted Minecraft with RTX on, and to be completely honest with you, I also really wanted to do that. And I did my best to get it to work, but unfortunately it just wouldn't turn on. So here is Minecraft Java Edition, and these results are really hilarious. So of course Minecraft has no way of gauging low graphics and high graphics, so all I did was I changed the render distance. So Minecraft at 8 render distance or 16 render distance, which are the two that I would normally play at, ran at about 120 FPS. Those two were very similar. Now when you turn to the game up to 32 render distance, it fell all the way down to 35 FPS. It was completely unplayable. <laughs> I have no clue what happened there, but that's just the way it is. Again, another game that is completely playable on this laptop. Next up was PUBG. The differences between high and low, again, weren't very high here, 
but they were there. So what I did here is I actually turned on the Epic settings because while I was testing, Epic and High didn't have that much of a difference in FPS. And I thought that some people might want that extra resolution boost. Therefore, Epic settings ran at about 85 FPS, while Low settings ran at about 90. Not much of a difference there to be completely honest with you. Either way, you're not getting your 144 Hertz but you are passing that 60 FPS mark, which is what I consider playable. Next up is Subnautica. Now, all these games were brought up to me by you guys, so if you want to have a say in what happens in these videos, make sure to join our Discord or follow me on my social media. So Subnautica on high got about 80 FPS. Now, Subnautica doesn't have many graphical changes, but when you turn the settings down to low and turn the water quality down to medium, you're gonna get about 95. So there is a little bit of a boost there, it's not very big, but it is there. Now, I had to throw at least one VR game into here, so the next game up is Beat Saber. Beat Saber has a bit of quality settings, but I didn't really play around with them, and the game ran at a smooth 70 FPS. Didn't drop, didn't change. That could be because I was using the quest, but that's what it ran at, and it was perfectly playable. Now, next up was League of Legends. <laughs> And I'm laughing because this game just ran so goddamn good. League of Legends on high settings ran at about 180 FPS. Which again, perfectly playable. I mean, why would you want to turn that down like ever? <laughs> That's like, you're getting your 144 hertz, blowing it out. Plus like, why? Why would you? Why? And when you turn the settings down to low, you'd get about 200 FPS, which is just... I mean, beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. So as you can see, the Razer Blade 15 is more than capable of playing your games. But I also did the temperature benchmarks. And when you look at those, things start getting a little bit more interesting. Now, as you can see, I am not a professional at graphs. And therefore, all the graphs, instead of saying Celsius, say FPS at the end. So please excuse me. So when we look at the graphs, things start getting a little bit more interesting. As you can see, GTA 5 on high graphics got 85 degrees Celsius, while when you dropped it down to low, it got 80. As you can see throughout, I'm not going to read all of them out for you because you can look at them on screen, but as you can see, there's a clear pattern here. These are the CPU temperatures, and in some games, turning down the quality means a lot, while in others, things don't change at all. Either way, the laptop does get pretty hot, but it was actually comfortable enough for me to touch and play on. Now, when we look at the GPU temperatures, they're actually lower than the CPU temperatures in most cases, which is really nice to see because that's the part you want to work best while gaming. So as you can see here, again, not, not that big of a difference between qualities, but it is still there in some games and it is worth keeping an eye on if you want to keep your laptop cool. So guys, now while I'm talking, I'm going to show you the graphs once again. So here is the FPS graph, just in case you want to screenshot it or anything. Here is the CPU temperatures graph. And then here we have the GPU temperatures graph. As you can see guys, this thing is more than capable. And if you're thinking about getting the 2020 model, I can only assume it'll just be better. Now, a lot of you are probably more rich than I am and therefore you can probably get higher than RTX 2060. So this is kind of a nice place to start. These results will kind of show you the bottom line and you can only go up from that bottom line, which I look at as a good thing. So again, this is probably going to be the last video on the Razer Blade 15 because I don't want to be dragging this series out. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have had enough of this. So if you guys have any questions about this laptop, if you want to buy it, or if you're thinking about buying it, let me know down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer all of them to the best of my abilities. If you guys liked this video, if it helped you out, if you want to see future content like this, not on the Razer Blade 15, and you're part of that 94.3% of people that aren't subscribed yet, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, join the 360p gang. Follow me on my social media here and here because I ask you guys for suggestions there. That's where I got this games list. And yeah, once again, if you guys like this video and if you want to see future videos coming out every day, make sure to subscribe, ding my bell, and see you again in the next one. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.